the surium batter, soak half cup of raw rice and half cup of parboiled rice together for about 5 hours. Soak quarter cup of urad dal separately for about 5 hours. First grind the urad dal. I've ground the urad dal to a nice smooth batter, adding very little water. So it should be a nice thick and smooth batter. Make sure you don't add too much of water and make it too runny. The key is to make the batter nice and thick. Transfer this batter into a bowl. To the same mixer jar, add the soaked raw rice and the parboiled rice. You can see the batter is ground to a very smooth consistency. I've added very little water to this. So make sure you don't add too much water and uh, dilute the batter. Transfer the batter to the bowl where you've transferred the urud dal batter. Add quarter teaspoon of salt, mix it nicely. Now you can see the batter is very thick and smooth. This is how you want the surium batter to be. So once you've mixed everything together nicely, and leave it at room temperature to ferment for about 8 hours. The batter is ready. It's been fermenting overnight. For the surium, I'm going to soak 1 cup of chana dal. Wash it and soak it for about 2 hours. Add enough water so that the dal is completely immersed in water. Don't add too much of water because the dal is soaked sufficiently. Now pressure cook the chana dal for about 3 whistles on medium flame. The dal is done, keep it aside. Now I'm going to melt 1 cup of jaggery with quarter cup of water. The jaggery is completely melted, turn off the stove. Next I'm going to make the sweet poornam for the suriyam. For this, take a white saucepan, add the cooked dal. If there's too much water left, strain it and add the dal. Mash the dal slightly. Strain the dissolved jaggery mixture into the dal. Mix it well. After about 5 minutes, add powdered cardamom 1 teaspoon, add freshly grated coconut half cup, mix everything together and keep the flame on low while mixing. The puram has become nice and thick and all the excess moisture has evaporated. Add 2-3 to three teaspoons of ghee, mix it well. Turn off the stove and keep the mixture aside to cool it completely. The puram is cooled on completely. Take a little bit of the puram, roll it into round balls and keep this aside. You can make about 20 to 25 surium with the puram filling. Heat enough oil for deep frying. To check if the oil is hot enough, add a little bit of the batter. If the batter rises up immediately after adding to the oil, it indicates the oil is hot enough to make the surium. Once the oil is hot, reduce the flame to a medium and leave it on medium throughout the frying process. Mix the fermented batter well before dipping the purnam into the batter. Take the sweet purnam, dip it into the batter. Make sure it's completely covered in batter. And gently drop it into the hot oil. Fry it till it's golden brown colour on all sides. Remove it and place it aside.
tapioca pearls. Pour enough water so that the sambudana or the tapioca pearls are completely immersed in water and let it soak for about 2 hours minimum. Peel the loki, cut off the ends. Remove the seeds in the center and grate it. Use the fine grater. Take a white saucepan or a kadai. Add 2 tablespoons of ghee. Add the grated loki to the saucepan or the kadai. Make sure you make it immediately after grating. Cook the bottle gourd for about 15 minutes. You can see the vegetable is completely cooked. Next, I'm going to add 1 litre of full fat boiled milk. Once the milk comes to a boil, reduce the flame and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. The milk is nicely reduced. Next, I'm going to add the soaked tapioca pearls. Drain the water and add the tapioca pearls to the milk. A good indication to see or to note if the tapioca pearls are cooked is to check. You can see they become transparent and also they become nice and soft. Keep the flame on low and continue to cook. So let them cook for about 5 minutes. Since we've soaked them for 2 hours, it shouldn't take long to cook the tapioca pearls. The tapioca pearls are cooked. Now I'm going to add the cardamom powder. To give it a nice extra flavor, I'm also going to add some dried rose petals. Now this is entirely optional. If you don't have rose petals, you can also add a drop of rose essence or rose water. But these dried rose petals gives a very natural rose essence or a rose flavor to the kheer. Next, I'm going to add 3 4 cup of sugar. You can adjust the sugar according to your taste. So if you can see the keel has thickened beautifully, turn off the stove, roast a few cashew nuts and raisins and add to the keel. Pour half teaspoon of ghee to a small pan. I'm going to roast cashew nuts and raisins. Roast the cashew nuts till they are golden brown in colour. Once the cashew nuts have come to a golden brown colour, remove them and roast some raisins. Roast the raisins till they plump up and remove them immediately. Add the roasted cashews and raisins. You can serve the keel hot or chilled. Put it nice and chilled, you can do that as well. For the moong dal paisam, I've taken one cup of moong dal, wash it and then I'm going to pressure cook it with a little water. Take a little water in a pressure cooker and add the washed and cleaned moong dal. Pressure cook it for about four whistles on medium flame. Dal is cooked beautifully. The next step is to melt the jaggery. For this, take a little water in a saucepan. I'm adding 250 grams of jaggery. Melt the jaggery completely and keep it aside. So now I'm going to mix the dal and the melted jaggery. Strain the melted jaggery into the dal.
Next, I'm going to add about half teaspoon of cardamom powder. After 5 minutes, turn off the stove and keep this aside. Now, I'm going to just roast a few cashew nuts and raisins. Take one large teaspoon of ghee. Next, add a handful of raisins. Once the raisins plump up, remove them. Next, add the chopped coconut bits. Now, this is optional. If you don't want to add coconut, you can just roast the cashew nuts and raisins. So, I'm pouring half cup of thick coconut milk. Now, this is optional. Adding coconut milk enhances the flavor of the payasam. If you've decided to use coconut milk, make sure you let the payasam sit for about 10 minutes after you take off the stove and then you pour the coconut milk. After adding the coconut milk, add the roasted coconut bits and the roasted cashews and raisins. The payasam is done, it's ready to be served. You can serve it hot right away or you can serve it at room temperature. For it nice and chilled, you can do that as well. You can get a copy of our first edition of the home cooking book on 21 frames.